in collaboration with the University of Rio Grande, Rio Grande Community College, and the Ohio State University South Centers, we proudly present a series of different broadcast TV and radio shows that highlight different aspects of small businesses. Our co-hosts include Ryan Mapes, Endeavor Center Manager and Program Leader with the Ohio State University South Centers, Mike Thompson, Director of the Instructional Design and Media Services at the University of Rio Grande, and Brad Babs, Small Business Development Center Director with the Ohio State University South Centers. Small business owners and guests discuss information that is strictly business. I'm Senator Larry with Ryan. Ryan Mapes. I'm not sure what happened behind the scenes there, but are we on? All right, we're good. We have a bunch of amateurs down behind the, the cameras <laughs> over here, so <laughs> hang with us here. Okay. Uh, it sounds like we're way high. Okay. Welcome to Strictly Business once again. <laughs> I'm here with Ryan Mapes from uh, the South Centers OSU. Glad and to be back. We're going to talk about some business stuff. And this business stuff can uh, uh, relate to people with businesses or your own personal finance. Yep. Well, today, yeah, we brought along a special guest, Dwayne Adams with Adams Wealth Management. Um, and we really want to get into all the uh, investment, retirement planning. Um, I know we hear a lot of the jargon of around the investment world and I'll be honest, I don't know what all of it means. So hopefully I'm a today, real novice. <laughs> hopefully today, Dwayne will be able to shed some light on some terms and give us some ideas on uh, things to think about. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the show. Thank Dwayne. you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, where do we want to start? Well, I think we ought to start by, Dwayne, you can tell us a little bit about uh, your business and how you got into the business and sure. where you're based and just give us a little bit of history. Okay. Uh, I got into the investment business in 1994. Uh, started off with a, a regional firm and I was there for a couple years. And then I um, went to a bank program, managed a bank investment program. I did that for about um, 18 months. And I decided to go out and open my own uh, firm because there were um, a lot of specialties that I wanted to specialize in that could not be done in the larger firms. So uh, in 1999, I went out and um, we started Adams Wealth Management Group. And um, we started in Centerville, Ohio. That's where our headquarters is at, still today. That's just south of Dayton. Um, our broker dealer is LPL Financial. They're the largest independent broker dealer um, in the country. And so we use them for our investment clearing. Um, and um, so we've been there since 1999 and then we've recently opened up in the last few years a couple offices in Southern Ohio. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, and as Dwayne says, uh, Dwayne is a partner in our Endeavor Center business incubator mm -hmm. as well. So. He's branched out from the Centerville office or Centerville location into the Southern Ohio region. And it's kind of a unique story on how, how did you get into Southern Ohio from Centerville? Yeah, it's an interesting story. At least I think it is. I had one client who worked for a company in Dayton. Uh, we handled his retirement accounts and he moved back to Southern Ohio after several years in Dayton. And I, he, I received a phone call from him one day and he had a referral for me. So I came down and visited with that person. Uh, they became a client. They had a referral, and that that person had a referral, and and then I got involved with the the A plant near the uh, mm -hmm. Endeavor Center there, and our business just grew exponentially over a very short period of time, uh, mainly just by referrals. Referrals. So, I, yeah. I know we were talking before the show, and you said your assets actually yeah. are split about fifty fifty between yeah. the Center yep. office and the Piper location. Yeah, which blows my mind. You know, fifty percent of our assets is in Dayton uh, that we manage, and then forty nine percent here in southern Ohio that's just over the last six years. Yeah, that's great. So this shows you how the, the voice of referrals can, <laughs> right. can work. That's always you. a good endorsement. Yeah, yeah, yeah it works. So, what kind of, uh, 
all products does your office handle? Well, that's a good question. We're, we're a comprehensive financial planning and wealth management firm. So we do comprehensive financial plans for people um, in addition to the wealth management side. What's the difference between financial planning and wealth good, management? Good question. When we do a financial plan, we're bringing in all of your information, uh, all of your asset information, all of your liability information, as well as your income and expenses, uh, what your anticipated social security is going to be in the future, and we run it through um, a financial plan software, and we make recommendations based off that. So if we do a retirement plan, you might say to me, hey, I want to retire when I'm 59. Here's what I have now. Here's what my expenses are. Uh, here's what I expect my expenses to be in retirement. When can I retire or can I retire at this time? You ever have to tell anybody, it's like, no, you're never retiring? Yeah, we have. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a very good conversation to have. Not never, but maybe 10 years later than what they expected. Right. And that has happened, and that's not a good conversation to have. I prefer, uh, in fact, last night I had dinner with, uh, with some clients and um, ran the proposal or the, the plan, and they actually uh, had two options. They could either increase their, their monies that they spend in retirement or they could retire six years earlier. So those are the kind kind of you know conversations we like to have, but yeah. So okay, so it, the the question of what do you handle, what kind of services or products? Well, it's a good question. So on the investment side, the investment management or wealth management side, um, we handle almost any type of investment product that's out there. So we get to work with stocks, individual equities, bonds, um, mutual funds, and um, annuity products. Um, we do with we work with 401ks, you know, different IRA products, retirement products, as well as some alternative investments, you know, some REIT products, uh, real estate investment products, uh, commodities, and just about the whole gamut as far as investments go. And so that that goes along with the financial plan. Once we run the financial plan, then that helps us decide how those investments should be invested. And are put there together a portfolio. certain ones of those that are more risky oh, yeah. or ones that's more safe? No, oh, absolutely. Um, that's exactly right. They start from, you know, we say a, a risk scale from 1 to 10. Um, some of the products are in the 1, 2, and 3 area and then uh, on up. So, yeah, all the different products are, have different risk levels. And some products, like for instance, uh, individual equities, have different risk levels within Right. individual equity. So yeah, I wasn't sure sense. if it was the products that were more risky or the levels inside of that that were It more. could be both. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to ask, <laughs> uh, we hear t the terms like mutual funds, stocks, mm -hmm. bonds, uh, IRAs, mm -hmm. and I don't want this to be a definition show, but I think uh, giving the audience uh, maybe the term they hear all the time, mm -hmm. not being familiar with exactly what that is yeah. and how they differentiate from each other, sure. uh, where they can be used. So maybe we'll start with mutual funds. What, what's, what is a mutual fund? Well, a mutual, a mutual fund is, the, mutual funds were developed years ago for investors that didn't have large sums of monies to invest. Because to invest in a stock, if you're going to buy a stock that's $50 a share, you have to have quite a bit of money to buy any number of shares of stocks that makes sense, right? So what they did was they created a mutual fund, and it's just that. It's a mutual fund. Um, so each person that puts money in that fund owns a part of that fund. So uh, for lack of better ways to explain it, let's say there was 100 stocks that this manager had bought in a mutual fund, and you put a dollar in it. You, and it wouldn't be exactly this way, but let's just use it in as, as an example. You would have a, if you put a dollar in it, you'd have a penny, one penny invested in each and every one of those stocks. Mm -hmm. And obviously, buying individual equities outside of a mutual fund, you couldn't buy a penny um, or one, a, a share of stock for a penny unless it was valued at a penny. So, But isn't that a safer way to go with a mutual fund? Because within those hundreds, some will go down, mm -hmm. some will go up, and it kind of averages things? Yep. It's an automatic diversification. That's, that's the second advantage of it. Um, is you know if you're going to buy individual equities, you you could buy one, two, or three equities, and I've seen people do that. Um, but to be diversified, it's better to have a number of different stocks or companies own own a number of different companies uh, versus one or two. Sure. And that brings us to the next. Yeah. So yeah, you know, what what's a stock? All right. Good question. So a stock. This is the easiest way to explain this is the difference between a stock and a bond is. A stock, if you, if you own a stock, you're part owner of a company. Okay. So you get to share in the profits or 
the, or, the or nope. lose. <laughs> or lose. <laughs> like I should have bought a whole bunch of Apple stock back in the 80s. There you go. Or even just a couple years ago. <laughs> um, a bond, you don't own the, you don't own, you're not, you have no ownership in the business at all. It's simply you're loaning the business money. So for instance, um, if Apple wanted to borrow money, they could go to a bank uh, and borrow money from a bank or they could issue bonds. If they issue bonds and people buy those bonds, the monies that they that they give to buy the bonds goes directly to the company. So it's sort of like money. what they did back in the 40s for exactly. war bonds, mm -hmm. except that was a government and this is for private companies. Yeah, okay. it's it's it, oh, the exact same thing. And so you get a set interest rate on, on that bond. So it might be 4, 5, 6% that they're going to pay you for loaning them money. Right. Uh, and those bonds can be, you know, two years, it can be 30 years. Okay, so they have different terms. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And the mutual funds don't do that. No, mutual funds are you liquid. You can come in and out whenever. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. So if, well, I guess we'll take the personal route for a minute. If, if me as a, an individual wanted to come or wanted to purchase stocks, bonds, mutual funds, what would be the easiest or best route to pursue uh, as far as maybe just contacting a financial advisor? Yeah, it, it depends. There are some, some people that, um, that feel comfortable choosing their own stocks or their own securities. And if they feel comfortable doing that, they can open up an online trading account with one of the online people. Or if they feel like they need some advice, um, go see a financial advisor sure. and they can make recommendations. Okay. I'll put your microphone. So, uh, I know we were talking before the show. Uh, now, kind of switching gears to the business route, mm -hmm. the business side of things. Uh, what are some things that you see that businesses aren't doing that maybe they should be doing uh, for future investment, retirement planning, those along those lines? I mentioned earlier when we when we started our company, one of the one of the big things was we wanted to focus and specialize on certain areas. <clears throat> One of the areas we focus, two, two of the big areas are, we, we focus on helping people decide what to do with their 401k when they retire. That is probably um, 60 to 70% of our business. Um, another large part of our business is advising business owners uh, in regards to retirement planning and succession planning. So what we have found over the years, or I have found over the years, the, the two biggest mistakes I think um, and I'm not sure they're really considered mistakes, but where they, where they don't pay maybe enough attention is their own retirement plan because you're taking care of your business. That's your baby. They're taking care of that, but they may not necessarily be taking care of themselves. Um, so when we approach business owners, we go in and we call to consult with them um, and we work with them in trying to decide or uh, d design some type of retirement plan for them. Okay. Uh, the other part that I see um, disturbing is, is succession planning. Uh, and as a business owner myself, I know, I know how difficult that can be, but there has to be some plan in place for um, if something were to happen, if someone were to, you know, get, get killed in a car accident or, or anything could happen, uh, or they just, you know, to the point where they want to retire. There well, has to be some type of plan in place. I think that's an excellent point because as a uh, small business development center advisor, uh, you know, lot, lots of times we come across people that want to buy businesses or people mm -hmm. that want to sell businesses, but they don't have that plan in place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously the business owner, the current business owner always thinks that the business is worth more <laughs> than what the one that wants to purchase it can pay, can pay for it. Right. And so that's kind of a, would that be something that could be fit into the succession planning um, as far as valuing the business mm -hmm. or... Yeah, that's exactly exactly okay. what we do. I okay. work. We have a gentleman that works um, with us, and all he does is succession planning mm -hmm. for businesses. He doesn't do any investments. He doesn't do retirement plannings or anything else, uh, or retirement plans. He just works with business owners, and and you 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 said exactly what he does. You explained it perfectly. He goes into a business. He appraises the business, and you're right. It's almost always worth less than what the business owner thinks it is. Yeah. Uh, and then he will he can help uh, that business owner work with um, work with ways to improve profitability um, so that 
you can, uh, you know, try, the whole idea is to increase the value of the business. And if we can increase the value of the business three, four, or five years before the before that event happens, then then the owner might get what he expects. Sure. So yeah, yep. it's a big part of a, the planning process. Yep. Yeah, and we find a lot of times that um, you know even customer lists and things like that, you know, of people that have, um, if a business owner has a customer list, that's mm -hmm. what they're trying to sell, but it's hard for the purchaser to to see value in that exactly. or a bank to lend against it. So right. But without that, the business can't survive. Well, that is exactly right. But at the same time, I've seen businesses who think they have something to sell later on. But I've also seen business owners who, who don't realize that they have something that might be yep. of value to someone. That's a good point. And if they don't set up a plan, then that business just dissolves in thin air. Sure. So. Good point. Do you hit the succession planning at all during uh, in your business plans that you guys do? Uh, we like to have, uh, really, really depends on what the business is, mm -hmm. what stage the business is in. Uh, if it's a you know, secondary stage company that might be thinking about selling or getting out of business mm -hmm. eventually, sure. Uh, if it's a startup company, it might not be something that we focus on. Let's see on. if it flies first. Let's see if it starts <laughs> and gets going. And then you know, once you become that second stage company, then we can start looking at things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I, I and again, this is me for my information too. Uh, you hear the term IRA, mm -hmm. uh, and I know there's about ten different kinds of IRAs. Mm -hmm. uh, what could, um, what are they, mm -hmm. and how could each type of IRA benefit in certain situations? Good question. So an IRA been around for a long, long time. Uh, but I, it's, it's amazing that uh, and people even have IRAs and, and a lot of them don't understand exactly how they work. So it's a great question. It's individual retirement account. Correct. Right. Yeah. Individual retirement account. And um, the amounts that people can put in today are $5,500, 5500 If you're over 50, you can put in 6500 And in a traditional IRA, the monies that go into the IRA are before tax. So if you write a check at the end of the year or in April for $6,500, put it into your IRA, you get to write that right off of your, your tax return, off your adjusted gross income. So the monies that go into that IRA then are tax deferred until the day you start withdrawals. So all the gains on the monies that you put in are completely tax deferred. No taxes are paid on those over the years. And then when you reach 59 and a half, you're able to start drawing on that IRA. Okay. Now, the, the thing about that, the traditional IRA, is every dollar that you take out is taxable. So because the monies you put in was before tax, and then the gains, of course, weren't taxed, so it's all taxable. Okay. The Roth IRA is a little newer product. The difference between that, the limits are the same, but the difference is every dollar that goes into Roth IRA is after-tax money. So you can't write that off on your taxes. It doesn't help you today or this year on your tax return. but all the gains that accumulate in that Roth IRA over the years is 100% tax free. Not tax deferred. The traditional IRA is tax deferred. You will so if you if you put in 5000 bucks, which you would probably have more than that at the time you withdraw it. If you took out 5000, you made another 1000 in interest, then you don't owe taxes on that extra 1000. That's correct. Right. Mhm. Mm Good. So those are, those are a great plan, and they become more and more popular. I think many people think that um, in the past, people, that when they retired, most people had less income than they did when they worked. But today, we're finding more and more people have um, close to the same income when they retire, if they've planned well. Mm -hmm. And so if, if there's not too many things that I'm 100% sure about, uh, and especially when it comes to the United States government, but I can tell you this, I really think taxes are going up. So a lot of people are using the Roth IRAs now. They prefer to pay today's tax dollars at, at 15% or whatever and get tax-free growth mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. to defer taxes today and pay a higher tax rate later. Well, if you're in the 15% tax rate today and you defer it 10 years and now you're paying 28. Seems to make that sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so a lot of people are using the Roth account. Yep. And in the 401ks, there's Roth options, too, on mo most of them. And, hmm. and it, I've also heard the term simple IRA or uh, SEP or SEP yep. IRA. Yep. 
Um, we Again, we work with a lot of businesses and retirement plans, 401ks. Uh, but for the smaller businesses, employees 100 or under, we normally use, uh, depending on the business, uh, but we normally we'll look at a simple IRA mm -hmm. because they're so inexpensive. A 401k can be very expensive to set up, can be very expensive to maintain. Um, there's testing that has to be done and we have to pay for that as well. Um, a simple IRA, they're, they're, none of those apply. Uh, very inexpensive, can be in as, as inexpensive as $10 a year per person. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and so you can put in uh, $12,500 a person in a simple IRA. Um, and if you're over 50, you can put in 15500 I believe. So the limits do change within uh -huh. each product. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Now, when you do your uh, oh, business planning, mm -hmm. helping people do that, sure. how many times do they actually plan out uh, their employees' benefits is included. <laughs> Probably not as often as sh it should happen. Right. Uh, uh, I guess there's a limit to how many people you have, maybe. Yeah. And uh, uh, to and be quite honest, probably, Mike, I'm learning a lot today. About right. It, so this has been great for me to sit and listen to the different types of things. So when I do sit down and talk with the business, now we can bring up some of these ideas, not. Usually the top one the on the question. list is health care. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, are you going to offer health care? But then the next idea is retirement. Well, the health care, I can tell you, is a whole different, that's probably a two-hour show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so any small businesses that are watching, just a, a, a small piece of advice. If you haven't already talked to someone about the Affordable Health Care Act, uh, you need to do so. Uh, it's to make sure that all the paperwork and everything is in order so right uh, that's a small disclaimer but <laughs> <laughs> again completely different topic but yes so uh, if I'm growing my business and I want to okay I want to step up for my employees and say I want to give them a retirement or account is it, it first is it my uh, responsibility to do that or should I just tell my employees go out and get something but I guess if if I'm going to, then I'm going to put the money into it before they have to, correct? Just like I would in a retirement account. Right. So yeah. I would come to you and try and it's like I got 20 employees. Mm -hmm. I want to set this up. Yeah, we would we would gather information and then we would make a recommendation based on that. But I can tell you, smaller businesses, many of them don't realize how inexpensive it is to set up a plan. And they also may not realize just how important it is to their employees. Mm -hmm. um, just met with a trucking company recently out of Cincinnati, a small company, but they called me because they had uh, drivers going to another company because they offered a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. And it's really not that expensive to implement. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the answer is yeah, you, you, business owners need to talk to someone, get some advice, and um, I think they're going to be surprised at how inexpensive it can be. And the amount of money that the business has to put in doesn't have to be that much. It can be as little as 3% of each person's salary. Well, and I was just getting ready to say that you took the words out of my mouth on uh, you know, what a business could or should do because that small 3% can make a huge difference mm -hmm. in employee turnover. You know, morale. Morale. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of things that the less turnover you can get, obviously, the better the company is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. something as small as a 3% contribution to a retirement plan, you know, that can save you 20, 25% mm -hmm. on a cost of trying to rehire somebody. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So. Now, is there <laughs> any other uh, benefits that an employer should look into other than health care and retirement? Um, the only the only areas we work in is in the retirement area. Okay. Um, the succession planning specialist that that works with us, he may work in some of those other areas, but not much. Okay. okay. Uh, I know this is a trick question. Okay. Uh, if Thank I'm you. <laughs> if I'm looking to retire, uh -huh. how much money should I set aside? Is there a certain percentage? You hear ten percent of your paycheck. Is there any truth to uh, that? that? I know it's a variable. Uh, so we'll put you on the spot. With no, no, putting on the spot. I get that question all the time with our 401k participants. We manage some 401ks, or not manage them, but we, we, um, we, we 
sponsor. Them. So we, we work with the participants, and I get that question all the time. And okay. as, as, as vague as this sounds, my answer is typically put in as much as you possibly can and put it in, make, raise those contributions until it hurts. Once it hurts, then you can back it <laughs> off a little bit. No, really. That's the <laughs> that best way sense. to explain it. Because there is no magic answer. You can say 10%, but 10% to you and 10% to you is completely different right. based on your lifestyle and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. sure. so, okay. Good question. Good answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have any, any more questions. <laughs> Not that I'm done, but I wasn't sure where we were going after that. Okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, as far as the investment goes, um, you know, so it's up to the individual as far as uh, the amount that they can mm -hmm. stand to put in and how much that, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the, the old rule of thumb is, is if you can save 10% of your income, um, that's the old rule of thumb. That has changed quite a bit because okay. things are just different than they used to be, but that's mm -hmm. still a good number to use. Okay. Still a good number to use. Okay. Why don't we throw up the... Uh, uh, contact information. I think we've got okay. a couple uh, graphics there. We can put up the uh, that's your website and your email. Yep. And I would just say for uh, you know small businesses, as a business advisor, we're not sp specifically allowed to say go talk to Dwayne. Go talk to this certain CPA. Go talk to this. No, we're not. Insurance it's agent. not an endorsement. But. I can tell you from personal experience, you know, I've worked with Dwayne personally and uh, he's been great. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there are any questions, um, definitely contact a financial advisor, if not Dwayne, <laughs> and that maybe they can point you in the right direction. Right. And I want to thank you because we've had our, one of our offices, I'm not sure how much we talked about it, is at the Endeavor Center, right outside yeah. the A plant. And you guys have been a great help. Yep. And uh, we appreciate that. Yep. It, well, it's nice having that, just location-wise, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can see Dwayne's office from my office, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's nice to have that. To, if, if that question, if a question does come up from a business, I can say, well, I don't know the answer. Walk across the <laughs> hall. Walk across the hall, <laughs> you might find the answer. Mm -hmm. so, so that's... It's a good thing to think about no matter your age, and probably cheaper the earlier you start on it. You don't mm -hmm. want to start yep. your retirement thinking at 50. Sure. No, you're absolutely right. The sooner you can get started, the better. And uh, obviously, your your investment goals change over the years. So as you get closer to retirement, you want to move your investments to more conservative investments. Mm -hmm. But gosh, when you're starting off and you're young, go uh, for you it. Have a little more chance to be a little more conservative <laughs> okay. or a little more aggressive. So right. So. Okay. Well, Thank thanks you. for watching uh, Strictly Business, and hope you have gained some insights on this. And we will see you next month. <laughs>